Hi everyone. This is the Serpinskinator. So it's a flying machine. It moves all along instantly. So that you see there's no slant, there's no delay. And it makes Serpinski triangles. So they're kind of like at a weird a weird angle here. But if we get ourselves at the right angle, we can make it look... There you go. All cool and symmetrical. It's kind of like a Zelda triangle in a Zelda triangle in a Zelda triangle if you've never seen a Serpinski triangle before. So, how does it work? The way the whole thing moves all at once is using reverse extended sticky pistons. So, you push one segment, the segments have little T shapes in the middle of them. And as soon as this redstone block starts moving, this piston retracts and starts moving the next segment. Power one last time. Perfect. What the heck happened? Oh, okay, I'm being a dummy, that's what happened. Now that still leaves a problem. We gotta move this sticky piston forward too, because it didn't get moved forward with the T segment. So to do that, let's go ahead and put a normal piston right there. Slime blocks there, redstone block, and update the normal piston. There you go, sticky pistons on, move forward. We also got to make sure that we're alternating our sticky components between slime and honey. So for instance, on the next segment, the T would be built out of slime blocks like that. Redstone block there. And then the component that pushes this sticky piston forward will be made out of honey so that it doesn't get stuck on the slime. And there we go. I've already hooked up three segments. So next we got to make the part that actually pulls the blocks up from the ground. And for that, we're going to make use of the fact that if a sticky piston receives a pulse from an observer, it will toggle the block in front of it between two spots. The spot two blocks away from it and the spot right next to it. Now, observers fire when they're moved as well, so... Now, observers fire when they're moved as well, so... Each time we move this, that wool block there is going to get toggled between two spots. And the way we start to get interesting behavior is when we make this wool block itself another observer that gets moved back and forth. So if we put another wool block there... And now here's the one part of this that I don't understand. If we move this forward like so, the observer gets pushed up against this sticky piston, and so we can start to chain these segments together. But this sticky piston didn't fire, which doesn't make sense to me. If we build the same thing here on the ground, the second sticky piston also fires. Now, if we move this again, because this observer is already right up against the second sticky piston, the second sticky piston will fire. Like so. Now, it's that whole not firing when it's supposed to fire behavior that makes this possible to move instantly, but I can't tell you why it's happening. My guess is that something about the piston is still moving, or the component it's attached to is still moving, which doesn't let it extend, but it, it every time I look at it, it looks like it's done moving. Maybe one of you guys can tell us about this in the comments or in another video. Okay, so I went ahead and just attached two more segments to this, and now what we're missing is the downward facing sticky pistons. The way we attach those, we just go down here, and on the rightmost block of these T's, facing this thing from the back, we're going to put down the respective slime or honey block, matching the component. And each of these is going to carry the downward facing sticky piston, just like that. And once you've got them all in there, this thing's ready to work. So already, if we just power it one piston at a time, It'll make Serpinski triangles for us. 
But if we want to make it a bit faster, what we'll do is put a little engine on the back of it. So we go ahead. This is kind of one of the most simple old school slimestone engines you can have. And there we go. We just started it up by updating this sticky piston here. We got ourselves a little Serpinski triangle maker. You're not really going to be able to tell at this size. And then one closing question for you guys. Why is this making a Serpinski triangle? When I designed this, I was trying to make a flying binary counter, and that's not what I got. I think I understand why it's making a Serpinski triangle, but the expl only explanations I could come up with were not in they didn't make sense easily and they were kind of ugly so i'm hoping that one of y'all viewers can come up with a better explanation for why a serpinski triangle and not a binary counter comes out of this device